be participants or would would I not see any more? <laughs> you picked an interesting time to say that because we are now live. Yes, we <laughs> probably live. went live at some point in the middle of that uh, in the middle of that sentence. Sorry, keeping it real. <laughs> so, hello and welcome, everyone. Giles and I are back again for uh, for one uh, one last session together to wrap up our Excel World Cup boot camp. Um, and so th there's like one fairly uh, kind of unexciting uh, part to this, which I'm going to just jump in and do right away um, because it's more just, you know, you got to eat your vegetables uh, and then we'll have some more kind of open chat in general. But the, the, the bit to start with right away is just we're going to walk you through exactly what is it going to look like on the day. Hopefully that day is tomorrow if you've signed up because, you know, I've been banging on about this all of the last two weeks. You should sign up. It's the best way. Like watching videos is, is great. I encourage it, but you won't actually cement what you've learned unless you go and try it. Uh, and the last thing you want is to tell yourself, oh, well, I'll, I'll try when I'm ready because this is how you get ready. But anyway, having said that, uh, let me pull up. I've got a, just a very quick slideshow here. Uh, and you, so, you, you, ne you never mentioned there's a, there's a there's a code you can get some free cases, can't you? Did, did you uh, mention you can that for for once? for one more day? <laughs> for one more day? Have I have I mentioned that they're free? They're did free cases. <laughs> 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 All right. So if you sign up, which you should, have I mentioned that you should? Have I mentioned that they're free? <laughs> you will get an email just like this one. Uh, this is from uh, from last year, obviously. Uh, You'll get an email from FlexiQuiz, which is the, the team they used to do it. I assume they're still using them this year. All of this is obviously how it was last year. Um, it will say, you know, access to Road to Las Vegas 2024 Battle 1. And it will have a link right here. You click on that, click on that, and it will take you to something that looks like this. Uh, that does not start your time yet. Uh, so it just gives you some, some quick reminders here. Uh, it gives you a link to a video and it gives you a button to press to start the battle. So one thing, important thing to understand, uh, just, you know, the one piece of this that is kind of pro tip as opposed to just, you know, you click on this and then you click on that. There is a 45 minute window from when the email goes out to when you need to be done. Uh, and you only actually get 30 minutes to work on the case. So the idea is, you know, it might take you, like maybe it takes you a few minutes to realize the email is there, you follow the link, blah, blah, blah. But the video is available here before you go in. I didn't even realize this the first couple of times. So that means you can go and look at that video. They're usually like a minute and a half or two minutes long in the time, like in the 15 minutes at the start and still have half an hour left to do your thing. So you get, you know, a little funky animation like this one for whack-a-mole, but you also get a bit of an explanation of the rules of the game and what's expected. <clears throat> you'll usually get at least some amount of, you know, the screen scrolling over the actual cases. You'll get a sense of what the data layout is like. Sometimes you might actually get to, you know, kind of see the first question or two, although I think they've stopped doing that now because they realized we were onto them. Uh, but it just means that rather than, oh my God, 30 minutes have started. I'm downloading the file. I'm opening the file. I'm supposed to be answering questions right away. What's going on? Ah! You can be ready for it. You can know what's coming. It's just, it's a much nicer, less stressful way to start things off. So recommend that. Uh, then once you get in, you click through that start battle link and it takes you to here. A few things to point out. One is there's a timer up here in the corner uh, that'll count down your remaining time. Um, I think that goes off screen as you scroll down. So I recommend just like having your phone to hand uh, as well instead uh, and just, you know, hit the start timer on that at the same time as you hit the start timer on the other. Uh, the first thing here is going to be the Excel file. So the first thing you're going to want to do is click on that and download it. Oops, come back. Um, I clicked on that in my PowerPoint presentation for no earthly reason, but anyway, just in the moment. Um, the second thing you'll see is a space to put in your answers to the bonus questions. Um, and the important thing to understand here is that the bonus questions are free text. So you will not get any feedback on whether you're in the right general direction. So it's particularly important to read those questions carefully. Like the classic one is, it you know, something like which round number has the highest value of X versus what is the highest value over all the rounds? Like I mix those two up all the time and answer a round number when I'm supposed to be answering, you know, the value of that round or answer a value when I'm supposed to be answering a round number. So just be particularly careful with that for the bonus ones. Then for each level, you'll get 
three multiple choice questions. They usually have whatever, I guess a half dozen choices. Uh, so th this gives you a little bit of feedback. So <clears throat> you, you've seen, if you've watched any of the, the videos we've done on, on the case walkthroughs that you get, <clears throat> you get an example with a solution. So first check that you match that, and then you'll get a little bit more feedback for if these match. Sometimes the answers are just like small whole numbers or it's which one of these two things, you don't get a lot of feedback from that, nothing to be done about it. But sometimes, you know, like here, for example, sometimes they're big numbers. Uh, and, you know, if you have 1000 and something and the answers are all supposed to be between, you know, 2910 and 2960, you'll get a pretty good hint that you're going in the wrong direction. So three multiple choice questions. And then you have to put in, it used to be a total um, like this. More recently, <clears throat> there's a cell in the file that just combines all the answers from the level and you copy and paste that in. And that's actually a great thing because it used to be that you had three chances to get individual answers right and then you had to get every answer right to get the checksum. So if you had like one value wrong, you'd only score a three out of 20, uh, which is very frustrating. Now you'll get scored on every individual uh, question you answer. They only brought that in relatively recently, but I, I think that's going to be there for the rounds this year. Hope so. Um, and then down at the bottom below, so there's a block like that for every level, three multiple choice questions, one total or a level code like this. And then down at the bottom, <clears throat> you upload your finished Excel model there, just drag and drop it in. And then below that, there's a button that says submit. Uh, and that's it. That's kind of the process that you'll go through uh, on the day. I said I was going to keep that part brief, uh, which hopefully I've lived up to. Um, the rest of the session, we're just going to talk a little bit about sort of closing thoughts, what you want to get ready for for tomorrow, and obviously any uh, any questions that people have. Giles, do you want to? Yeah, I, I, I wanted to add, I really like that update to the scoring. That makes a lot of sense. Uh, the other thing I was just going to suggest, and again, like uh, I, I, I I keep promising myself I'm going to block three months out and train properly. Um, and I've, ne I've never done it. So I just need to take my own advice and Dim's advice and just sign up to all of these properly. But the first time I did this, I wasn't comfortable with my keyboard setup uh, on my old laptop. And it, it just threw me completely. Then I bought a new keyboard and the second battle, I wasn't good with the new keyboard. So um, it's a bit of a sob story to just say, make sure you're comfortable with your setup. Be And more broadly, you know, be in an area where you're going to be left alone for half an hour, turn off your notifications, like just have comfort and wherever you are for 30, 45 minutes, whatever it is. Yep, I totally agree. I, I recommend like trying to have just a, a physically clear space with, you know, ideally a pen and, pen and some paper next to you, just in case you want to kind of jot down notes and anything kind of weird or complicated that comes up. Um, definitely, uh, definitely helps. I just see there's a question here. Do you have to click submit before the 30 minutes? Uh, no. Um, if you, uh, if you run out of time, it auto submits for you, I think. Um, at least that's how it was last year. The, the reason I'm hesitating is because I know that the, um, the Excel collegiate challenge, uh, people are also taking part in this round. And I think they have a slightly different thing that like they can go over time, but get penalized. So like they lose marks for going over time. Um, so I don't know if that means that they're going in through a different thing, or if it means that we actually have to make sure that we submit by 30 minutes. Um, I haven't heard any kind of new guidance to the non MECC population. So I assume that means they're going in through a slightly different thing. And it will auto submit for us after 30 minutes. I guess the other thing to mention is if you uh, if you run out of time at the end because you're frantically finishing off one last level, which I feel like I am 75 plus percent of the time, and you don't manage to uh, to upload your file in the system, just send it to the uh, there's like an info at fmwc.com uh, email address. So I just send it there if I don't get it uploaded on time, uh, just so they have it. Uh, there's, there was something that, that we said or we promised you would do, which I, I don't want to let you off the hook for, even though you were you were kind of doubting whether it was worth value to people. <laughs> but mindset wise, we set out the three things at the start, the, you know, the Excel skills, the mindset, the practice. Um, so it, a question to you, Dim, is do you want to share any top tips on how you deal with the pressure? Bearing in mind, you've been at the Vegas finals and, you know, dealt with about as much pressure as anybody that competes in these things. I, I'm not in some ways, I'm not sure I'm the best person to offer advice on this because 
I I maybe take this stuff a little too seriously. <laughs> um, it's it's definitely if I have good advice, it's probably in the spirit of do what I say, not what I do, um, because I if if you watch some of I'm thinking of some of them in particular, but like some of my live recordings from the knockout rounds last year, you'll see me kind of, you know, slightly freaking out and, you know, you're like, come on, why isn't that? <laughs> uh, so I would definitely say, <laughs> try to remain calm. Uh, I, I honestly, I don't know. I, I have this conversation with some people and they're just kind of like, well, yeah, of course, like, why would you be worried about this? And I have it with others and they're like, oh yeah, the pressure, the, t the intensity, your mileage may vary. Um, I, I do encourage you to think of it as like, A, as something to do for fun. I mean, I do it for fun. I have a competitive streak, but I like, I genuinely enjoy doing these. Um, that's the only reason that I still am doing them after more than 10 years of competitive excelling. Um, you know, it's, it's a game. Uh, don't take it too seriously, even though, again, I do take it too seriously. <laughs> um, um, I, I mean, everything after that, like there's there's a degree of kind of confidence and tactics, but I think that kind of only comes after a certain amount of experience. Um, in, in particular, the big the big tactical thing is knowing how much you can bite off. In other words, let's say you get, you've got through the first three levels and you're looking at level four and it's like, ooh, that looks kind of complicated. <clears throat> Maybe I should go and do some bonus questions. Like getting that kind of decision right has a big impact on your outcome because I've had it happen to me a few times that I've said, okay, I think I can tackle this level. I've got 10 minutes left and I work in the level for 10 minutes and don't get it done because I needed 15 or whatever. And I get zero points for that last 10 minutes. But on the other hand, I've also had it happen to me that I say, I've got 10 minutes left. That is not enough for this thing because it's complicated. I'm going to go away, do some bonus questions. And then I spend five minutes on the bonus questions. I'm like, all right, well, I've done everything I can do there. I might as well try this for five minutes. And then it turns out I needed five and a half or six minutes to do it, not 10 or 15 or whatever. Um, now, obviously, I have lots of experience and still sometimes get that wrong, but it's worth trying to develop a sense and like you can do this in practice or you can do it in the real battles uh, of how long can you expect something to take you? Do you have a sense of how complicated a problem is? And that's, that is intimately connected with how quickly can you come up with the design? Like looking at a complicated question, how quickly can you figure out this is the structure I need? These are the pieces I need to lay out to build this model. Um, <clears throat> and again, that's, it's all about experience, but I guess going back to the mindset perspective, it is worth, I, I've actually been, the, the thing that I'm working on for this season is I am trying to consciously slow down. Um, and that's, that's not everybody's problem. Some people, you know, say to me, like, how can I go faster? But what I find is, and again, your mileage may vary, but I, I feel like I'm at the stage now where the thing that I want to do I usually end up doing. And more often, the thing that goes wrong is not that I didn't make it do what I wanted it to do, but that I was trying to make it do the wrong thing. Um, and, you know, I make mistakes of both types regularly, but I think I'm at the stage now where I make more of the mistakes where I'm like, I, I really, you know, skim the question as fast as I can, try to like put something in, use the examples to calibrate, and then just move on as fast as I can. And that has come back and bitten me a number of times now to the point where I'm like, okay, I'm going to force myself to actually sort of, you know, read aloud in, at least in my head, maybe in person, if there's nobody else around the instructions so that I actually go through every word uh, and try to try to internalize it. Like knowing exactly what you're getting into and then building the design to that is definitely, um, is definitely worth taking a couple of minutes to do. And it, look, it may be that you're saying you're, sitting there listening to this and you're thinking, what, what do you mean a couple of minutes? I need 10 minutes just to read the question. And this is, you know, there, there are some that have particularly long sets of instructions and there are lots of competitors for whom English is not their first language. Um, I, I don't have any, you know, great tips to, to fix that. I'm, I'm, I'm actually doing a, a session in a couple of weeks with, uh, with Peter Charles and Harry Siders um, to pick their brains a little bit because they're, 
they're two very good and also very prolific case authors. Um, hoping they will share some nuggets of wisdom on how they how they kind of keep the instructions clear and clear and tight. Um, but yeah, it's it, again it once you have enough experience of like what does the build look like, then you should be able to look at the question, understand what's going on, and have a pretty clear sense. These are the steps I need to go through and have a reasonably clear sense of this is about how long it'll take uh, or, or what pitfalls I might hit. And the other thing, because I, I throw out this golden triangle thing at the start, the other thing we mentioned was, uh, um, I think I put experience, or, or I think it was experience, and we talked about practice. And and we've we've touched on it loads. And again, for me, it's almost like public, it's like public speaking. These battles for me are like a public speaking challenge. You're only going to get better if you keep doing it. Um, and it's going to feel horrendous at the start. Uh, that is a message to, I guess, most people, but in particular, the less experienced players or potential players um yeah just jump in yep so i see a few uh, a few questions on the live chat someone asked if a tie happens are they checking the time of uh filling on the platform yes uh the tiebreaker if people are on equal score is who submitted first so it's it's not about when you put in pardon me when you put in any particular answer it's when you commit like when you once you hit submit you can't go back and change your answers so the, the time left when you hit submit and kind of lock in your answers is the tiebreaker. A um, <clears throat> couple, uh, couple of suggestions. Uh, so one is uh, the two monitors uh, often help or the view new window feature. Um, so I, I will say <clears throat> setup is an interesting conversation. Um, I, I live my life on a laptop. Um, like even right now, I'm I'm kind of watching the live chat in a sliver of the corner of the screen while I have our faces on the Zoom call in the in the main body. Um, that works for me, and you know I, I travel enough and switch locations enough that I, I I never get used to using a second screen. But I know that some people find it very helpful. Um, you know to have. <clears throat> to have a big screen where you can just, you know, take the space to build out a model, to have a second screen where you can have, you know, the, the place to submit the answers over here so you don't have to be tabbing back and forth. And then the other thing that, that Valley mentioned about the, the view new window feature is super helpful. So if, I don't remember the keyboard shortcut, but they're basically, you can Google it, you can find the details. There is a way <clears throat> to kind of split and have two copies of the workbook open, at, like two views of the same workbook open at the same time. And what that means is you can have one that stays on the instructions, for example, while you work on something, or you can have one that stays on like where you need to put the questions while you have a second tab open that has, you know, your, your model uh, running, that kind of thing. Um, so yeah, that's, that's definitely a good tip. The other thing that I've seen people do um, and I've, I keep thinking to myself when I see it, oh, I should do that. I noticed Andrew Nye doing it in his, uh, he posted a great walkthrough video of how he did the, the Vegas finals, um, is just either copying chunks of the instructions and, and the data and just like having multiple copies, like again, terrible practice in real life, but if it helps to have it right there, then that's great. And then the, the other thing I see Lorenzo do all the time on his videos is just like taking a screen capture of the relevant section of the instructions. Because um, the, the instructions, the main instructions tend to be in like one big merged Excel cell, which is not ideal. So it's it's hard to kind of copy one piece of it and keep the formatting. But just like using the, the screen snipping tool and then dropping those instructions right next to wherever he's working. So if he has a a separate tab for level four. <clears throat> he, he puts that over there. It's it's very helpful. And Lorenzo is one of those guys. Uh, he, he, I remember at one stage he was doing like two hours practice a day on this stuff. <laughs> wow. Honestly, um, I knew he was yeah. pretty hardcore. I didn't realize he was that hardcore. <laughs> some serious serious hours practice. Uh, which yeah, fair play to him. Yep. Uh, so let's see what else we got. Uh, yeah, so Klinsman and Bo, uh, I, I knew this from talking to them before, both commented that like reading reading and processing in, in real time is is the biggest challenge. And it's, yeah. yeah. I, I hope that we will kind of move in the direction of cases with simpler instructions. Like I, I think about um, about harry's battle royal case from last year as kind of the gold standard for this or like lana banana actually was also that, that was complicated in other ways but the instructions on that were super short super simple um 
I like I when I think about like trying to write a case myself, I think of that as like the standard to aspire to. And I, I think other people should as well, because I think it makes yeah. it a much more level playing field for, for people who don't speak English as a first language. Um, what else? Morgan says, do you have any tips for dealing with cases like Vlookie case with a map? Um, so, uh, I mean, I guess on the specific question, looking for a walkthrough of that case, uh, Bo Ridabon, XL wizard has a, a walkthrough of that case on his channel. Um, so just uh, go search for XL Wizard. Uh, he's, he's the comment right above you. You can probably just click on his name there. It'll take you to his channel. Um, but yeah, go there and, and search for Vlookie. Um, you'll you'll find his walkthrough. Um, we didn't. We kind of deliberately stayed away from some of the more advanced topics, even ones that come up with some frequency uh, in this course, because. Well, because we wanted it to be an introductory course. I think maps are sort of on the borderline, which is you can do a lot with the, the day specifically that I spent talking about, I think the video was called Indirect and Friends, like how to get from the name of a cell to a reference to the cell, to the row and column number of the cell, and then to add and subtract from that row and column number to to kind of move around a map. Um, the, that will give you a lot of the tools for that. Um, but, I mean, as you'll see if you watch Bo's video, there are some pretty advanced techniques for that. Like one, one thing that he does all the time is like assigning a single number to each cell in a 2D map, which is usually something like a thousand times the row number plus the column number. Um, and that makes it in some ways a lot easier to work with. Um, a lot easier to work with as you kind of do manipulations. Like you can you can capture all of the all of the directions like up down left right or even diagonals are just uh are just single number changes so like you know plus 1001 is the equivalent of going down and to the right like one increase the row number by one increase the column number by one plus 999 is the equivalent of going down one row and, and one to the left um it's the setup takes a little bit of getting used to again it's kind of why we didn't cover it in this course but uh, but you can you can do a lot with that. Is it worth mentioning the, the group of YouTube channels that anybody who isn't aware should be following? Like you, you obviously. I mean, you're doing a a, a solution walkthrough. I think every time Lorenzo, um, Bo, uh, there are others. Andrew now uh, definitely worth following. Uh, are there others yep. in that list? Um, I mean, esports specific, there aren't a lot of others that do it regularly. Willem Gerritsen did one, uh, but as much as I've tried to persuade him, he hasn't done any more since. Um, I'm trying to think who else. I feel like there's one other person who's done at least a couple, but oh, actually, the um, the FMWC South Africa. Uh, channel is also worth following in a similar vein because um, they they did uh, Rainier and Stain and Jason uh, did walkthroughs of all their cases which are very much kind of right. they're not a part of this competition but they're very much in the style of the esports cases um, and they did a sort of discussion walkthrough like compared notes on how each of them approached it and how that helped or how that hurt them you know what setup they had for one level and and how that you know what implications that had later on so that's it's less kind of you know do this and then do that but it's it's quite helpful in terms of thinking about okay so i'm doing it a certain way but how can i be a little more thoughtful about alternative approaches that kind of thing i mean the, the other thing in terms of alternative approaches is again like passive consumption is your enemy um, because like a lot of the time, if you, you know, if you watch Bo or you watch me or you watch Lorenzo or whatever, and we do something that's like odd or creative or whatever, you might not realize that like, it's, it's hard to know, would you have thought of that yourself if you had tried it first? Um, like I, when I watch Bo's videos, I'm like, wow, he comes up with incredibly creative things. And I think it would be easy for somebody else to watch it and just not real like just oh yeah so this is this is how you do it, but try it yourself, and you know, muddle on through the best way you can, and then watch how elegantly and efficiently 
Bo can solve it, and you'll realize just how much there is to pick up there, and and like the the significance of his design choices and other things like that will be much more apparent to you if you've tried it yourself and and sort of struggled with you know how do you manage the edge cases or that kind of thing. Great. Let's see what else we got. Uh, oh, Elliot, thank you. That's uh, that's very kind. Uh, it's good to see that uh, that people's colleagues are are tuning in and learning. That's nice. Now, <laughs> uh, Alamari says, "Remember my name." All right, that's the fighting spirit we like to see. <laughs> Uh, let's you're see, just up to the pressure on yourself forever. <laughs> what, that, what was that name? Should we add it as text when you post this recording? Um, let's see. We've got Klinsman says the Vluki card game and and other or, order oriented cases are a challenge because you need to consider everything that happened before. Vluki also adds the map slash direction layer to it. Yeah. So there's, there's a good point there. So we we talked a lot about kind of individual techniques. There is a sort of approach to working through these multi-step questions, which isn't, it's not that it requires any different formulas, but it is, there's a sort of thought process around it. It's worth, if you want to have a go at those, it's worth taking a look. I mean, again, try it yourself first, and you will learn 10 times more by watching somebody else's clever approach later than you would by just passively consuming. But uh, have a go at, at one of those cases, and then go and look at those videos and see like the, the way that we sort of build out. It's, it's an interesting thing because it, like, it's hard to give one general rule because what you'll find is some of those cases, um, it's sort of, you know, maybe you have 20 different steps in the input, like it's 20 different ingredients you're putting into your potion in the potions master case, or it's 20 different steps you're going in different directions in the Vluki case, or 20 different cards that get, get dealt in a card game or whatever it is. Um, Sometimes it's, you know, you lay out those 20 and then you kind of do a thing. You're basically just building left to right. You do a thing with each one of those. And there's there's not a lot of interplay between the levels. But sometimes, and those are the more complicated ones, there's lots of interplay between the levels. So, you know, how the ingredient you put in fifth behaves depends on what ingredients you put in first, second, third, and fourth, uh, and that kind of thing. So that then then you're going to need to kind of build it up in a way that like each layer links to the right pieces of the previous layer uh, rather than just being able to kind of build one column at a time and, and just be done. Um, let's see what else we got. Uh, Rainier says, thanks for the mention. You're very welcome. I love those cases. <laughs> uh, I says on maps, I still think that indirect and diagonals is a solution. Yes. Um, so, this is uh, something uh, Valley and I discussed in the in the comments, uh, maybe on one of these videos, I don't remember, a while back. But uh, he had a very nice approach, which is if you want to figure out the distance between like two addresses, whatever, A1 and G7, where you're allowed to move like horizontally, vertically, or diagonally, one nice way to do that is to define a range by saying indirect of first cell, colon, second cell. And then you can count the number of rows in that, count the number of columns in that. Uh, and then if you can only move horizontally or vertically, then the distance between the two is just the max of those gaps. And if you can move diagonally, sorry, no, sorry. If you, if you can only move horizontally and vertically, then it's the sum of the two. If you can move diagonally as well, then it's the maximum of the two. Um, so that's a, that's a handy trick to know. Um, I think that's kind of all the questions. I don't know. I, I didn't really have uh, have a whole lot else to say other than, you know, it's your last chance to get the free cases. They won't <laughs> be free, free tomorrow. Free. <laughs> uh, free. And it, it, this is, I think, I think you're still just about in the window to sign up for tomorrow. I think it closes down about 24 hours before. So, you know, last plea, if you haven't done it, do it. Don't, don't wait to be ready. You're ready now. Awesome. Because Excellent closing the, trivia the for you. Uh, did you know Bo only started using Excel something like four years ago? Was that common knowledge? Oh my god! <laughs> yeah, which blows my that mind is, when you see what he does. That is um, wild. Actually, um, I'm, I might be a year or two wrong, but I remember him saying that he started using it for. He'd never used it before uh, a few years ago, which is which is crazy when you see what he does. More yeah. crazy trivia for you. 
Dim and I will be doing a road trip, a recorded road. Is this public knowledge now? We'll be doing a road it trip. It is now. We're live. <laughs> we're we're going to be in a in a in a cameraed up, mic'd up car with with Paul Barnhurst and Oz, all being all plans going well. Uh, recording our trip, genuine road trip to Vegas for the finals. Uh, we haven't told Andrew about this yet, by the way, but we we've made the plan. Uh, so hopefully that'll be fun for everyone to watch. Uh, I just see one last question in the comments, uh, which is, is it all at the same time? So yes, um, the the financial modeling one, if you take part in that, is kind of you do it in your own time over the space of two days, but the esports all happens at the same time, um, which I think is like 11 a.m. tomorrow. I don't know. You should check the website rather than my sketchy recollection, but I think it's 11 o'clock. Um, the other thing to mention on that is, the way they set it up is, like I said, there's a 45-minute window in which you can do it. Uh, and like just before the end of that window, the live stream starts. Uh, so after everybody works through it at home, there's a live stream where like four players, including me for tomorrow and Klinsman, who's on the chat, uh, and Jack and Samir, uh, are going to have a go after that on the live stream. So you can watch. you can watch what happens there. You can also kind of go in the live chat just like here. I, you know, I always enjoy when I've done it offline, be like, hey, did anyone manage to work out level four? Or, you know, hey, what's, you know, how did this thing work? Or, you know, let's compare answers to bonus two or whatever it is. Um, so yeah, the, the idea is that it kicks, it, it kicks off slightly before the end of the window, but it's like, there's a bunch of introductions and stuff. So the idea is by the time you're done, I and a few others will just be kicking off and you can you can watch us muddle our way through it. Oh, almost forgot one last uh, little piece of insider intel um, on tomorrow because we had the the sort of prep session yesterday. <clears throat> and I found out uh, because the uh, Collegiate Challenge people are joining tomorrow, the case format is going to be slightly different. So that basically there's going to be more levels, but with some more kind of simpler ones at the start. Um, so just, you know, rather than the usual five levels, I think there's going to be eight. And rather than the usual three bonus questions, I think there's going to be five. It's still calibrated, so they say, we'll see, <laughs> still calibrated to be solved in the same amount of time as a regular one. I'm deliberately not saying to be solved in half an hour because that depends on your experience and your skill and various other factors. Uh, but calibrated for some people to be able to solve it in half an hour in theory. Uh, but it does mean that, you know, if you were thinking before, like, oh, if I can get a couple of levels out, that would be good. You should probably aim a little higher tomorrow because the equivalent to getting a few levels out before is probably now getting three or four out because there's there's some easier ones at the start. So that's just a, a thing to keep an eye on. Um, and let me just see. <laughs> yes, Klinsman, totally agree. Everyone should everyone should go for it. Uh, all right, I, I think that's... I think that's all we've got. If you've been following along the last two and a half weeks, uh, then thank you. Uh, we've had like lots of engagement and interest and positive feedback, which is very nice when you're working on a project that turns out to be massively more time consuming than you thought it would be <laughs> when you publicly committed to doing it. <laughs> um, we've we've had lots of messages to each other at sort of 11 o'clock or my time 11 o'clock going, I'm going to be a little bit late. Yeah, I'm really sorry. <laughs> but I think we got 90% of everything we, we kind of wanted to get out. So yeah, thank you for watching along if you have been. Yeah, totally agree. Uh, sorry, I see one one more question. If you qualified, that means to the 120. Exactly. So the, the top one person on the live stream and the top four people playing at home qualify for a spot in the kind of knockout bracket to get to Vegas. There's There, there have always been a couple of different paths in there. Are, many more paths in this year. So I'll just kind of quickly explain that. So like 50 people across the 10 rounds, 50 people will qualify for the knockout that way. And then another 60 or so people will qualify from um, from a kind of dedicated qualification round in October or so. Um, and then a few other people will be in based on ranking in the FMWC regular season or other things. And then those 128 will go kind of pair up and go head to head down to 64 down to 32 down to 16 and down to eight and then those those eight go straight to the finals in vegas and then the rest of the final 32 as well as a bunch of people who qualify on the day 
uh, at another kind of last chance thing in Vegas, we'll go into sort of game day. Uh, they'll basically have a few rounds in the morning before the finals get whittled down to 16, I think. So those plus the top eight from the original knockout will fold together, have a live elimination battle. Um, yeah, it's uh, it's going to be it's going to be wild. <laughs> Indeed. All right. I think that's uh, I think that's what we got. Thanks, everyone, for joining us. And uh, if you're taking part tomorrow, which have I mentioned, you should be taking part tomorrow, <laughs> then good luck. Good luck, guys. Thanks so much.